Now that we feel comfortable handling our tools, loading the needle, and I guess that's what we've done so far, the next step, just like in real life, once you've loaded your needle, is that you're actually going to start throwing some sutures. And that means that you're going to have to be comfortable doing that before you start. Now, this is going to seem kind of silly and pretty... Uh, pretty low key of me to do this, but I stand by using this as probably your primary practice tool. What I have here is just a box, uh, these are a box of pens, and then a little towel that I've kind of put over the box, and this is what I practice throwing my sutures through. Now, Again, this seems very um, modest of a setup because typically in these suturing workshops you'll have something like pig's feet or chicken thighs or chicken breasts with the skin on them. But here's the thing. Those actually do not really represent live human skin very well. It's true that they're probably closer than most other things, but realistically uh, cold dead skin is not the best practice. This towel, in my opinion, is actually a little bit more similar in the sense that it's about as easy to manipulate as human skin is. Where when you practice on those, you know, pig's feet, they're small, they move around, this has enough weight where it will stay in place. And here's the real kicker you don't there's no sterile issues here um, when you're working with raw poultry or pork you kinda have to be mindful of what you're touching and cleaning your tools and also it costs money uh, to keep buying them you have to keep it refrigerated it's not very practical for the volume of practice that I would recommend that you get um, maybe even on a daily basis where you kind of build in time within your day where you can just practice manipulating the needle through something. And quite frankly, the hardest part isn't actually working with the skin. It's driving your needle through something, picking it up on the other side, and then using the tools within the confines of having to suture something. That is what you have to make muscle memory and it's very hard to do that with pig's feet because it's just not easy to do it in very high volume nor is it practical so what i would recommend is trying to do something like this and once you get really really good with the towel feel free to buy pig's feet as much as you want and my personal recommendation actually is to buy pork belly because it's large it's flat there's a lot of area and you actually can use the pork belly after you cut the skin off that you've been practicing suturing on uh, to cook with. So the money that you spend on the pork belly won't be wasted uh, provided you're not a vegetarian or have other food restrictions. Now with that in mind, back to the towel at hand. So we've practiced handling our tools. We're comfortable doing that. We know how to load our needle driver here and we have everything ready to go again with our forceps we're mindful of where the teeth are because we're going to be using this to manipulate things and we've loaded uh, the needle kind of in more or less perpendicular in the middle because the bites we're taking aren't too large here and as we start practicing really all we're going to do and again when you're doing this at home you should be doing this standing up straight back and it's difficult I know to start but that's how you're gonna do it in the operating room I'm leaning in because of the camera but don't pick this up as a bad habit because you will get in trouble and actually you really will hurt your back if you're always hunched over like this but anyway I'm not gonna recreate all of the wonderful suturing videos that already exist online I'll link them in to show you the different types of sutures that you can throw but the point is that with your towel this is what you want to be practicing over and over again. 
you want to be mindful of the hem here and you can use it as a target where you kind of want to expose things with your forceps clearly and then just drive it through and make sure that you're using not um, not your too much of your wrist to push but more your wrist to rotate and then you can just practice rotating through and throwing and this is really what you need the most practice doing is unlocking locking getting tangled with your suture reloading things as you go through the skin and pulling it through and again it's not going to be pretty every single time and it's not going to necessarily be perfect but you can practice kind of doing these steps over and over again with something that's sterile with something that's cheap and you just focus on your technique and you do this over and over again until it becomes second nature and you feel very comfortable doing all of these major steps and as you can see as I'm throwing when I drive the needle I'm letting the sharpness of the needle do all of the work I'm just rotating through before I unlock I'm using my my Adson forceps to hold on to the needle then I unlock and as I pull it through, I can start loading the needle again in the right orientation. And as we can see, I'm not doing the best job right now, but it's a very good and easy and fast practice setup and you can get really, really comfortable manipulating your tools, loading your needle, pulling it through, because this is what you need to be very, very good at. And it's true that this, is, this towel feels different than human skin, but again, the most important thing in the beginning, and what I would argue is the hardest, is just doing those things that I just did over and over again, not dropping your needle, should you drop your needle, being comfortable reloading it, getting all of those things down to muscle memory, and with this setup, you can just leave it on your kitchen counter. You can do it for 10, 15 minutes every day when you come home, before you go to bed. You can build it into your schedule, and you can get very, very good at it and very, very comfortable.